Now I welcome our uh, director, Dr. Rajiv, to address everyone. Yeah. Good afternoon, one and all. Uh, in the last three years, uh, you'll be surprised to know that Triple uh, IT community has submitted around 194, 194 a research project proposal costing around 200 crores. This is really surprising. It's a small force, but uh, the outcome, the productivity is very, very high. Uh, friends, I would like to take this opportunity to highlight three vital issues related to innovation in India. The first issue, I would like to ask you a very interesting question. Just tell me, in the last century, in which period the innovation rate was highest? Repeat the question. In last century, in which period the innovation rate was highest? The answer is very simple. During World War II, you just check the history, you will find that maximum innovation they come up during this World War II. The regression analysis can reveal that there exists a close relationship between innovation and defense sector. Technological innovation shapes the war. A similar question I would like to ask. What is the secret of American economy? Or why America is superpower? The answer is only one word, single word, that is innovation. The innovation ecosystem of USA is tightly coupled with Three factors. The first one, industrial R&D. The second one, universities R&D. And the third one, military R&D. I'll repeat. There are the three factors. Industrial R&D, university R&D, and military R&D. They are jointly working everywhere. After the World War II, that is since 1945 in USA, US profit earned through military equipment export is shared by these three players. That is why they are superpower and having highest number of world-class universities. Remember one equation. On the developed countries, they are having 99% world-class universities and 99% Olympic gold medals. Both the things are going parallel. In world-class universities, the military R&D centers and industrial R&D centers they are working jointly. First time in India, through IDEX program, government of India is coming up with a similar kind of solution with uh, DIO and DIF. I would like to highlight my second issue, which is always very, very important and missing in Indian innovation system. That is innovation competencies. I have written 600 pages book on innovation, namely Innovation Growth Engine for Nation. Nice buzzword, but often misunderstood. This book is free to download. You can download from my site. In the chapter 7 of this book, I have discussed innovation competencies, a totally new phrase for Indian ecosystem. We believe that. The innovation comes from gifted people or it is an intellectual accident. We know only these two ways. But this is first generation innovation. The second generation has already started in last decade. What is it? We believe that the innovation comes from gifted people or an intellectual accident. It is not true. It could be from a result of hard and focused work that is the innovation competencies that increase the chance of innovation can now be learned. The best example is Samsung. Samsung's approach to innovation is not similar to Apple's competitive race style or Google's stuck work project style. But rather it is about systematically developing a group of creative allied that in turn for a methodical creative process. And what, how they are achieving? They are adopted Russian technique TRIZ, T R I Z. And there are similar experiments by another set of 12 world class universities. 
through they are providing ts training it is a four week training and after that surprisingly instead of getting one innovation per thousand person per thousand employee they could reach to 400 500 innovations per thousand employees and that is a tremendous rate in 2003 through the trees they got 50 patents but in 2004 samsung got 50 patent from one project and now you see the huge growth rate of samsung it is only because of that they could save 100 million dollars because of this technique why we are not focusing it we need to focus the third issue now i would like to highlight which is very very important for it sector especially computing sector the third issue is coding or programming competencies we have thousands of subject experts i know that they are expert is having iot i mean big data and so many fields the problem is they are unable to convert that ideas into software products why which almost all developed countries what they are doing they are from the fifth standard they have started developing the culture programming culture and that is why what is happening they could able to convert their knowledge into product and here that is a missing link which will have to focus in nlp uh, they have started from six standard they want to introduce but we should go aggressively now i will show the what is the result of this technique 8 crore population of usa i am considering 1% global population that is why i said 8 crore population of usa they have 8.57% global it market share how much 8 crore 8.57 global it market share and what is about us our 8 crore population global it market share is 0.22% 0.22% means american population productivity of american population is 39% more than india so 39% is a huge figure somewhere something is missing and we will have to highlight that and we must uh, need to focus on that now next point because there are so many interpreters and uh, i mean entrepreneurs and i must encourage them i would like to highlight few areas where we can do innovations oh uh, 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 one point is missing we have started uh, for india uh, youtube channel for c and c++ uh, which is a very required element for data structures and uh, we got very overwhelmed in this past in last week's one we got uh, around 25000 view, uh, views I mean, in a short time, uh, I mean, we got overwhelming response. Now, a few more uh, areas where we can do innovations for different sector. Smart weapons. For example, military personnel could talk or communicate with weapons under their command. They can ask the weapon to seek and destroy very specific targets without disturbing the surrounding area. Similarly, for a smart weapon in terms of deep sea mine for instance could identify ship to destroy by analyzing current vibration created by the ships meaning that mine could identify whether the target is a military or civilian ship next could be the robot it is a well known and very very uh, useful product for military next area is coming up is network centric ballistic management and intra troops communication both the areas purely based on ict and these areas uh, a lot of uh, innovations we can do in these areas the augmented and virtual reality for training as well as for maintenance and repair work that could be another area where we can do innovative product very easily it's not require very huge investment and it is a uh, effectiveness is very high then iot dr shahjul is favorite subject now it has the can differentiate internet of military things or we can say internet of battlefield things it is another area which is coming up and uh, use potential for innovation next is a sensor embedded on soldier suit helmet other equipments could capture 
biometric data, contextual information, even details on soldiers' physical and mental state. Gathering all this data can increase the soldier's chance of survival or lethal. So these are the areas which are very important and ICT can do a lot. Even information technology, cryptocurrency, quota and good can do many things, but we need uh, certain research laboratories and all. The US Health Force has been able to save around $1 million a week, $1 million a week in a tank refueling cost via age and cloud computing, working with Dell. So they could achieve this target. 3D printing, enormous utility, many parts we can create, prototype we can create, and we can even create a small part which are needed at battlefield. And the last and very, very important field, we need in future, next five years, I think, along with Army, Navy, and Air Force, we need cyber security force. And that is a very, very crucial and I'm, I'm really I'm very happy to share with you that we have started started MTech for working professional and from 80 IT industries, 122 students, students join and each one is, uh, I mean, very special. They are having 10 to 15 year IT experience in IT industry and that too, best IT industries. I'm not saying that startup. I'm saying the best IT industries employees are joining our institute for MTech. And recently, data science and AI, we got very, very good success. And one more we have started. It's a very challenging. UG and PG, both in cybersecurity. Just go through the syllabus. 22 subjects we have added for uh, MTech cybersecurity and UG cybersecurity. It's a, one of the best syllabus in the world. The possibilities are enormous. The triple IT code time is ready to accept this challenge. Today we have 30 faculty, 40 PhD scholar, 122 MTech student, and they are from 80 IT industries to incubation center. Our plan is in next two years, we'll be having 75 faculty, 300 PhD scholar, 1000 MTech scholar, maybe 2000, I don't know. It depends upon the response from IT industry and five incubation centers. Very soon will be topmost institute for information technology in India. Where is the proof? Saying something is not enough. Just visit the recruitment recruitment corner, the last menu item of our website. There is around 80 pages documentation which shows the vibrant nature of Triple IT Kota. You will get an idea how we are clubbing the innovation and research to build the innovation research university. Simply research university has no meaning. It should be innovative and research university. I'm sure with this huge workforce at Triple IT Kotayam, we can do the miracles. Our objective is to build an institute which will act as a major player for information technology innovation ecosystem of India, where industry, university, defense sector can work together for innovations and nation building. Thank you very much. Jane. Thank you, sir. Thank you for throwing light on the innovations.